We are Mike and Jeannie, and we restore old houses. In 2021, we moved to South Carolina and bought a 120-year-old Victorian house. Follow along as we put the polish back on this Victorian masterpiece. Welcome back to 1834 Restoration House. We are so glad you stopped by to see our latest restoration adventure. And what an adventure it's been too. <laughs> this is our first woodworking project that we've made in our wood shop. Let me tell you a little bit about who we are and what we're doing. So we are Mike and Jeannie. We have been restoring old houses for years. And our latest project is a 1900 Victorian house that's located outside of Greenville, South Carolina. Well, she needs some work. She's had some ups and downs over the years and it's, it was abandoned before we bought it. So we're just trying to put the polish back on this place and so that's what we're doing. Now this window right here behind us, we built this over the last couple of episodes. This is supposed to replace a foundation window that's failing on the outside of the house. It is literally falling apart, it's rotted, uh, it's being held together by package strapping tape, it's bad, so this window replaces that. Now this is solid oak. This window will last probably 100 years. And let's turn this around and show you what it looks like from the other side. This is the outside of the window. This is the part that faces outside. In this episode, we're going to prepare these muntins here and we'll set the glass in. And then we're going to prepare a special concoction of historic paint and we're gonna paint this up and make it ready for installation. The glass we're putting in here is held in with the putty. Now the putty has oils in it to keep it soft and subtle. The wood will absorb the oil and we don't want that to happen. So we're gonna mix up some shellac and alcohol, equal parts, and we're gonna paint in the grooves, just in the grooves where the putty is gonna go. And that will help keep that barrier between the putty and the wood. So let's go ahead and get this all stirred up. Beautiful, beautiful. I'm just gonna use a dollop because it's not a very big window. There we go. And then some denatured alcohol. We're doing equal parts. Mix that all up. Then we're gonna paint it. We're gonna paint in the grooves and just in the grooves. I don't really want it going anywhere else. I'm using a bushy brush because it works really well for keeping in my space that I need. See that? That was way too much in one spot. Let's spread that out. We don't want any clumps. That'll be hard to get our window put in. Oops, 
was a wonderful job of putting the shellac on there. It turned out great and dried really fast too. So I'm gonna take this, it's a tub of glazer's putty and I put it under a heater to make it nice and soft. So I'll just take some and put it down in the hole. It doesn't really matter if I slop it or not because it comes back off if we need to. So I'm just trying to fill that up. And most of this will be excess. It gets pressed out and recovered. I'm working at a very awkward angle here so that you can see what I'm doing. We've been experimenting with our glazing techniques and we've learned a couple of things here. The biggest problem is that the hardwood here is so hard that I can't get these little glazing points to penetrate into the wood fibers. So the glazing points are meant to hold the glass in. We normally put that like that and give it a push and it goes right into the wood and that holds the glass in place. It's kind of more like a safety clip, if anything else, to hold it in. But the glazing putty does most of the work as well as sealing the glass to keep the weather out. So in this case, we're going to have to forego the points, unfortunately, and we'll use putty in its place. Now the putty will last for decades, so I'm not worried about that. This modern stuff doesn't stick as well as the old stuff did. Once we have a bed of putty in there, I can take the glass and lay it in. And now I want to start pressing it down carefully. I'm pressing on the edges, not the middle, because I don't want to break it and have my hand in there. So I'm just going around the edges, pushing around in a circle. And I don't know if you can see it on camera, but it's oozing out the bottom, which is what we want. So our goal here is to have a thin bed of sealant all the way around. That'll make for a nice watertight window. I'm going around several times just to make sure I got it down as far as I can. When I reach the point where I can no longer push any more sealant out, then I know I'm done. So then I come back with the putty knife and just pick up the excess, and drop it back in the tub. And we can put that back and reuse it again. So there it is, we've got three panes done. We'll finish up the other three and then we'll come back. We've made a terrific mess here, but that's okay. We wanna see 100% squeeze out all the way around the window like that. Now, what Jeannie's gonna do is take this knife here and trim off all the squeeze out and get them off the window. At the same time, I'm pushing back on the window because we don't have glazing points. Pushing back on the window will keep it from popping out. Jeannie is using the sharp edge of the knife to make a nice clean cut. And then she's rolling out all of the excess and taking it away. Okay, let's move on. We'll demonstrate one more. Very nice.
All right, that was a nice job you did there. Well, and now you can see you've got the wood, you've got the glass, and the glass is seemingly suspended in space. Kind of is. All of this residue here will clean off later in the process once everything is completely set and cured. Now comes the time where we're supposed to glaze the outside, and that is done by putting putty in. You take your knife and drag it like that and make a nice chamfered edge. Well, that's how it's supposed to work. And we tried a couple on our own just before we filmed it to see how it worked out, and it didn't work at all. We had tear out. When you do like this, the whole thing would just come right up out of there. So I tried polishing the blade. That didn't help. And I contacted tech support, and they said, oh yeah, just mineral spirits should do it. Well, it didn't do it. The can here says do not dilute. And so I did some research and I found out that putty traditionally was made of chalk powder and boiled linseed oil. And I thought, well, we have nothing to lose here. So we took a little bit of boiled linseed oil and mixed it in here. And that seemed to fix it. Now here's the thing. This thing could have been manufactured 10 years ago and sat in a warehouse for another few years and sat on the shelf. We just don't know how old this stuff really is. There's no date codes or anything like that. I think we've effectively rejuvenated it. So here's what we do. We take a bit, roll it up, do like the children do and make a worm, a putty worm. I know you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> and so take that putty worm and just lay it in there like this. Looks like we have some extra here, so we'll just move it around. I'm not really trying to be careful with it. I'm just trying to get it in there right now at this point. Okay, now I'm going to take it with my fingers and I'm just going to shove it in there. Just shove it in. And if there's any excess, I'll go ahead and take it off. Put it back in the tub. But the main thing is just to get it down in there and put some pressure on it. Okay, now, with a clean putty knife, I'm going to just press it. Press it hard. And what that's doing is it's pushing it down into the corner and forcing it into contact with the wood and the glass in hopes that it will stick and stay on there. Okay, now, here's the magic. So with this, I'll wipe it off and get it clean. I can now go along here and I make an angle between the edge of the wood and the edge of where the putty is on the other side of the glass and I just pull nice and slow. Good firm pressure. Don't worry about breaking the glass. The glass is not going to break. Just keep that steady pressure on there, nice and firm. Keep it slow and steady until you hit the end. Now, that looks pretty good. A few minutes ago, we couldn't do that without the linseed oil in there. It just didn't work. Okay, I'm gonna go back in here and just try very carefully to get behind this. And then I wanna peel off the excess All that excess goes back in here and we'll reuse it again on the next spot. Okay, now the edge is not exactly perfect, but it's way better than it was. So I'm going to wipe my fingers off and then I'll come back here and I'll just, I'll just gently touch the edge like this. So go down the line here, just gently touch it, smooth it out like that. And I'll pick up any excess residue that's on the wood. So that is a properly glazed window.
If you're able to buy a fresh putty, consider yourself lucky because we have no idea how old this is, but fresh putty will probably make a big difference. So we're going to go ahead and do the rest of these up and then we'll come back. Well, here's the window all puttied up. Now it needs to sit for seven days and the putty will cure. And once it's cured, then we can go ahead and paint it. I think it looks great. That you, was fun. You did a good job. Oh, well, thank you. Now she did more of the putty work than I did. Um, <laughs> she just seems to have a knack for it. It took a few minutes, but she got a rhythm going and she did a much nicer job than I did. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> it all was right. fun. Well, hopefully um, it turns out well. We'll see what happens with the next stage. Speaking of the next stage, we have to paint this window. I um, apologize to those of you who love natural finishes, but this is going out in the weather and it's gonna get beaten and battered by snow, rain, and sun for the next 20 years probably. So we need a finish on here that's going to stand the test of time. Let's put this thing away and start the next part. Okay. The best paint for a window in an outdoor environment is oil-based paint. Now, last year at this time, we released a video called Painting a Victorian House on Christmas Day. And in that video, we painted this area right here. Take a look. I can't overemphasize how thin this paint has to go on. If you're used to modern paint and you try this stuff on an old house, you really have to adjust your technique. See, my brush load is really, really light, and I'm pretty much able to do the entire section here. It's been exactly one year since that video was filmed, thereabouts, and as you can see, this area here is now covered in black mold. That's oil-based paint that we concocted last year. Up there, that's oil-based primer. There's no paint involved, it's just primer. 
but that looks absolutely terrible. So I talked to a couple of experts and tried to troubleshoot what's going on here, and I learned a couple of interesting things. First of all, painting oil-based paint in December in a cold, damp environment is not the best idea. And I think, really, I knew that at the time, but I was hoping for the best because we had good stretches of weather and kind of got fooled by it. So that's part one. The other thing is the linseed oil that's in the oil-based paint has a couple of things in it that I didn't realize. It has fats and it has proteins. And mold loves fats and proteins, right? But there are ways of getting rid of that and purifying that oil so that those fats and proteins are removed. And so we're going to work on that. The other thing is there's a product called Japan Dryer. It's been used for many, many years to help oil-based paint dry quicker. And the faster you can get that paint dry, the faster it becomes hard and impervious to any problems with mold. So how do you purify linseed oil? Well, it's very simple. You need some linseed oil, some distilled water, and a jar. Now, the distilled water, I'm using this because tap water has minerals in it. It also has chlorine in it. So I wanted my water to be absolutely pure. You're not gonna find it any purer than distilled water. So let's take some linseed oil. And I'm gonna put some in the jar here. I don't need a whole lot because linseed oil paint goes a long way. So let's just maybe take it to here and we'll add some water to it. Maybe bring it up to about here. The actual amount isn't that critical. Put on the lid. Now they always say that oil and water don't mix, and that's absolutely true. You can already see that it's making a mess here. What I'm gonna do may surprise you. We just shake it up really good. So what's happening here is the water is scrubbing the oil and cleansing it, and it's causing it to attach to the fats and the proteins. So when I stop shaking it, you get this weird kind of a tannish brown color. So let's focus the camera on this for just a moment and see what happens. You can see a little bit of stratification going on here. It looks white here and kind of a brown color here and then there's a white layer on top. So what's going to happen is that the water will separate from the oil and the water will take all the fats and the proteins that were in the oil and take them down to the bottom. And when this is completely done, we'll have a layer of oil sitting on top that's more pure than what we had when we started. I let this sit for several hours and it separated as you can see. Let's take a close look here. So we have the water, which is no longer clear, so it's absorbed some of the nutrients that were in the oil. You can also see a layer of fat right there. Those are the omega-3 fatty acids. Same thing that's in salmon. Very good for you, by the way, but not for paint finishes. So that separated out. That's exactly what we want to see when we do the cleansing process. What's left up here is the oil. We have a wood shop set up now. You've all seen that. But Jeannie needs a workshop too. And her workshop has been crammed into our office for some time. And so we're gonna take care of that today. She's in here working, so let's go check it out. Welcome to one of the upstairs bedrooms. This one here doesn't need any restoration, although one could argue maybe the paper should be changed. But the room itself is in great shape. The woodwork is perfect, the floors are perfect, even the ceiling is perfect, and it really doesn't need much. So let's go over here and see what Jeannie's up to. Hi, you, love. Hi, how are you doing? Uh, slowly but surely, it's working. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. Yes, yeah, so what's happening in here? Well, as everybody knows, we got your workshop set up. But this sewing room that I wanted to set up is taking a lot longer than we really expected. It, we want to do the room right, okay? So we want all that paint stripped and it's taking a whole lot longer and Mike's schedule is getting pretty busy. So I figured, why not take this room in the meantime, until we get that room, I still want that room. <laughs> 
Well, it sounds good. It's a beautiful room. I mean, it is. the woodwork in here is perfect. Uh, it's probably the best preserved room in the entire house. Mm -hmm. And aside from the funky 1960s wallpaper, <laughs> it's actually pretty nice in here. Yeah, so want to help me get it all put in here? Yeah, let's do it. Okay. We got it all done. Here it is. I'm so excited. This is going to be fantastic. Lots of space, lots of floor space for the big stuff, my candles, and the storage stuff. This is going to be fantastic. I can get a lot more done now. Before we leave, we thought it would be fun to show you the window right next to the old window so you can get an idea of what this thing will look like when it's finished. The only difference is this will have paint on it, but that old ratty window, that thing is going away, never to be seen again. And this one here, will have that for the next 122 years. Wonderful. That thing will outlast us for sure. <laughs> Sounds good. Well, thank you for watching 1834 Restoration House. If you like what you see, please subscribe and leave a comment. We love hearing from everybody.